This is me sprinkling a secret ingredient. Bang! I'm gonna take you into my secret kitchen. On some dumplings I'm making for my roommates. That ingredient is MSG. But I'm not gonna tell them that, because I know a lot of folks are still afraid of MSG, which is short for monosodium glutamate. It's a savory, satisfying seasoning that's in a lot of things you probably eat every day, like chips, canned soup, and KFC. But for some reason, when it's used in East Asian cuisine, especially Chinese food, people freak out. There was even a condition named after it, Chinese restaurant syndrome. Some symptoms supposedly included heart palpitations, headache, chest pain, and others went so far as to say irreversible brain damage. But study after study has shown MSG isn't the cause of any of these symptoms. The FDA, the EU, and the UN all say it's safe to eat, and we certainly don't hear about 1.4 billion people in China experiencing any side effects. So why do so many people think MSG is a dangerous ingredient? And why was Chinese food targeted? The late Anthony Bourdain had one theory. You know what causes Chinese restaurant syndrome? Racism. I decided to investigate by eating, cooking, and breathing MSG for a few days. Hi, I'm Yara. And I absolutely love Chinese food. Mm. I eat it a lot. But I've never experienced this so-called Chinese restaurant syndrome, ever. So I went to New York to meet a Chinese-American chef who isn't shy about publicly using MSG. And he has a rad Brooklyn accent. Hi, I'm Chris. Chris is known for his dumplings. This is incredible. Thanks, man. And uses MSG specifically in his stir fries. So we poured some raw MSG out on a table. And I tasted this one kind. And then this MSG filled chicken powder. If you go to diners where they have soup, yeah. they're not boiling bones for eight hours. They're using this. But you don't come out of there saying, I have a headache. This stuff is so damn tasty. But why? Monosodium glutamate is one part sodium and one part glutamic acid. When it dissolves in your mouth, the two separate. And once that glutamic acid is free, it causes a flavor explosion on your tongue and brings out a unique, hyper-savory, meaty taste that consumes your whole mouth. That taste is called umami. Aside from sweet, sour, salty, and bitter, it's the fifth flavor the human tongue can sense. And it was discovered by Japanese scientists who basically extracted MSG from seaweed in 1908. And that umami flavor bomb, that free, unshackled glutamic acid, is also naturally found in things like tomatoes, mushrooms, and Parmesan cheese. But MSG in its powdered form? That's basically pure, unadulterated umami. Chefs these days love adding umami to their food, which is what we did. Umami. 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 And then we sprinkled on one final source of umami. MSG. It's as a finisher. You want to just a little bit and use it sparingly. When I was in China, though, they were a little bit more generous. I was always a little bit, a li little cheap with it. And they'd go, no, 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 no. Oh, scoop, right? Wow, that's so, so good. So absolutely nothing happened. No headaches, no palpitations, no nausea. If you go to China and you go to the supermarkets in yeah. China, you're going to see aisles of MSG like you would see here for cereal. We're talking about MSG. There's a little bit of racist undertones to it. Like, you know, some of the older crowd will come over and they'll be right to your face. They'll be like, you don't cook with that MSG stuff, do you? I know you're from China, but you're an American now, so you got to do things the way we like it. But how did MSG come to get such a bad rap? I wanted to know. Is there actually any definitive science that links MSG to those negative symptoms we've read about? And Dr. Ken Lee is going to help us get to the bottom of that science. Yeah, please call me Ken. All right. Ken is a food scientist with a passion for MSG, and New York's Chinatown is his old stomping ground. That, that used to be my uncle's meat market. It's now a poke bowl. What? Did your parents cook with MSG? Absolutely. It's just like salt and pepper. MSG is an essential ingredient of Chinese cooking. Is there any like double-blind scientific study that proves any of the health symptoms? I can say absolutely not. In a scientific study where people don't know what they're eating, okay. so they're fed MSG or a placebo, I mean, a sugar pill. Sure. People on the sugar pill develop symptoms as well. Could even be psychosomatic. A little bit of chemistry here. Hmm. Glutamic acid is a component of protein. Okay. okay. You and I are both made out of protein. Yeah. It's already in you. Yeah, it's in you too, and it's everyone that's watching this video. So how did the stigma against MSG come about? In 1968, a Chinese-American doctor wrote a letter to a major scientific journal. He claimed that whenever he ate at Chinese restaurants in the US, he experienced numbness all over his body, general weakness, and heart palpitations. His letter was titled Chinese Restaurant Syndrome. He suggested it could be caused by a number of things, including MSG. Readers then wrote in, talking about their own symptoms, and scientists started studying it too. But a lot of the initial research was faulty. Scientists messed up by assuming MSG was already the culprit, using ridiculously high doses of it, and failing to use placebos properly. 
But it was one study in 1969 that caused a massive panic. It famously injected MSG under the skin of mice, leading them to develop brain lesions. No human would actually consume MSG that way. No, but actually, good point. If you just took pr common table salt and injected it under your skin, you could induce a real toxic state. Right. Solid scientific research came out debunking MSG myths in the next few decades. But it was too late. No MSG signs had already popped up around the country. Everybody hears the accusation, and nobody tunes in when they hear the verdict of not guilty. So that's what happened with MSG. It's amazing. Just one letter, a bunch of flawed science, and an entire cuisine, an entire people, stigmatized. But here's the thing. There's a huge double standard. We actually eat lots of non-Chinese foods with MSG. But you don't hear about people getting sick from them. Well, we're going to go pick up some uh, foods and snacks that have MSG in them very openly. Good idea. All of these have MSG in them. However, when it's in these, it doesn't seem to generate a controversy. You won't find a label on any of these products being, you know, MSG free because MSG is accepted as a generally recognized as safe substance by the Food and Drug Administration. What are you feeling? A Dorito. Doritos? Yeah. Okay. Clink. Oh, hey. Oh, God. Savory. I'm not having any reaction. Is there like a small percentage of people that have reactions? Yeah, absolutely. What's more likely is they're reacting to other ingredients that are in that wonton soup or whatever they attributed the MSG to. Why do we distrust foods like MSG because it's used extensively by Asians? It's just ignorance. So if MSG is in all these Western foods, why do people freak out when it's in Chinese cuisine? We met up with Sarah Lo. Sarah wrote a book about the eight flavors that make American cuisine, and MSG is one of them. We met up with her at the Museum of Food and Drink, which has an exhibit on Chinese food and MSG. MSG is too savory as like a Sour Patch Kid is to sour. It's like mm. the most pure form of savory. This is just a bowl that? of MSG, right? Yes. Should we try it? Yeah, let's do a little boop, boop, boop. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. But first, we had to order some Chinese takeout. Is the food here? The food is Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sarah explained. Chinese restaurant syndrome. Like, that's xenophobic. You're essentially blaming an immigrant culture for making people sick. A lot of racism against other cultures revolves around this idea that, like, you're not even human. Look at what you're eating. It's full of this poison MSG. But how did MSG get to the US in the first place? After it was discovered in Japan, MSG made its way to China and became super popular. And Chinese immigrants then brought it with them across the Pacific. But one of the main ways MSG actually entered America was through canned food. By the 1930s, the US had become one of the largest buyers of MSG in the world. And the seasoning eventually found its way into military rations, condiments, TV dinners, you name it. The major consumers of MSG in this country aren't Chinese restaurants, it's American processed food. Every brand from Kraft to Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I've never heard someone say that they have Dorito syndrome. That is not happening. <laughs> yeah. Americans like to blame immigrants for things. When Italian immigrants first came here, they were villainized for their use of garlic. And garlic was, I know it's laughable right now, what American doesn't cook with garlic? The smell, the flavor was really simple symbolic of not wanting to become American. Four, five, six generations later, we love Italian food. So could MSG one day be as widely accepted as garlic? Perhaps. But there's a long way to go. The stigma is still very much here, which is why a lot of chefs are still hesitant to use it at their restaurants. And that's why we're here to talk to Chef Lynn. Hi. Hi. She runs a modern Vietnamese restaurant. Lynn and her family are from Vietnam, but they're ethnically Chinese and came to the U.S. as refugees. My parents cooked with MSG, so I'm very familiar with the ingredient. But as a professional chef growing up in the industry, because of the stigma, there was a lot of pressure not to use the MSG. Lynn is afraid that she'll lose clientele if she starts using MSG in her restaurant, but she still finds other ways to add umami to her food. Add a little bit of fish sauce. Now you got some umami in there, yeah? And the stigma against MSG has even touched Lynn's family. Her dad still uses it, but her mom doesn't cook with it anymore. So we went to Lynn's house to cook with her parents. You cook together with your wife. Yeah. That's so nice. I like it. Yes. <laughs> you don't use MSG in cooking today. No. Somebody said never did cook. Right. MSG long time, long, long time. I like this, this disagreement between mom and dad. Then we cook two dishes, one with MSG. All right, here it comes. Yeah. And one without to see which one right. tastes better. My goodness. So let's try without. Tasty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this one definitely has, I think, a little more fuller feel it to it. Kind of coats your mouth. It really brings out the other flavors that are in there. 
I can't imagine if like food from my culture, if I had to tell everyone like, oh, I've had to remove an ingredient from it, you know? Right. I feel like that would just be a really sad day for me. Like, the experiment we did at Lynn's house, of course, brings me back to the experiment I started the video with, secretly feeding MSG to my roommates. PSA, do not secretly put stuff in other people's food. It's a bad idea. Do not do this at home. So what's the deal with these dumplings? What's in them? MSG? Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, I basically put one teaspoon of this into the filling of those dumplings. One teaspoon per dumpling? No, 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 no. <laughs> put one teaspoon in the entire dumpling filling. I mean, it's a great flavor. How do you feel after eating MSG? Perfectly fine. Satiated, satisfied. <laughs> My roommates loved the taste and didn't get sick. And of course they didn't, because, well, the science says MSG is perfectly safe. What I learned by making this video is that people are afraid of MSG for a number of reasons. There's the initial flawed research, there's the rumor mongering, or racism. But things are looking up. A new generation of Asian American chefs are taking back the narrative. So I hope the next time you order some Chinese takeout and someone starts talking about getting a headache or something else, you'll be able to tell them. It's not the wonton soup and it's not the MSG. It's probably just in your head. I hope I've convinced you guys there's nothing to fear about MSG. That doesn't mean you should just go about dumping tons of it all over your food. Just like salt, or really anything in life, consume it in moderation. Anyway, share this video with friends and family who think they get headaches from MSG, and see how they react.